Hi, everyone, and thank you for attending today's USBC's Customer Service Webinar. I'm your host, Mike Larson, with the Association Development Team. I'm going to walk you through some items today that regard customer service and how it relates to our associations. First, what is customer service? Customer service is the provision of service to our customers before, during, and after the purchase. There is a difference between customer service and good customer service. Let's take a look at why customer service is important. 96% of dissatisfied customers do not complain directly to the company. So most organizations aren't even aware that they've provided poor customer service. 90% of customers say that they, if they receive poor customer service, they will not return. This is a staggering number for any company. Statistics show that one unhappy customer will tell nine others on average. And they also say that 13% will tell at least 20 other people. Now think about with social media. This number is likely significantly higher. Think about the last time that your friend complained about a company on Facebook. People did that reach, way more than 20. If you look at people who complain on uh, social media websites uh, about anything, there's a lot of people now that see that. Imagine if a celebrity were to complain on Twitter or Facebook about a uh, service that they have received. Possibly millions of people could have seen that. Now we're going to go through some examples of poor customer service. So think of some of these in your day-to-day -day life that you have experienced yourself. The DMV. When they tell you, here's a number, get in line. Not exactly the, the chipperest of bunch usually either. Airlines, when we're traveling. Oh, I'm so sorry, your bag's a half pound over. That'll be an extra $50. A lot of times the, the baggage fees can be a real hassle and, and lead to poor customer service because it's just an uncomfortable situation. A personal pet peeve of mine is Walmart. They always seem to need more lines or they, no more registers. There's plenty of lines. Like everyone goes shopping at the same time. Mechanics or auto shops. When you got to go get your oil change, how often does it seem to turn into a $500 repair? There's always something extra that needs to get done to make sure it's, it's proper with your car. And cable companies. I always say they give you a time frame of when they'll be there. You know, we'll have a, someone come out to service your home on a certain item. From one to six, you know, a perfect five-hour window where you've got to take time off of work to be there, and they always show up at the end of it, but you've got to be there at one in case they show up. Just leads to more headaches. So now let's take a look at some good customer service companies. Number one, or excuse me, number 10, UPS. Number nine, Costco. They only have a 3.6 rate of poor customer service, which is an outstanding for a chain like them. Number eight, FedEx. They deliver 8 to 10 million packages a day. Number seven, you might have seen this little logo, the Apple company. How many people are using iPhones today? They obviously received some good service. Number six, Southwest Airlines. Their stock symbol is LUV, love. Number five, public supermarkets. They're an employee-owned company. and They have very high ratings. Number four, Nordstrom. The return policy is super easy, customers say. Number three, Netflix. Their user-friendly website receives rave, rave reviews. Number two, Trader Joe's. If you have them near you, you would know. They have 487,000 likes on their Facebook page. And Amazon.com. 90% positive remarks. Customers love their easy-to-use website and how it relates to products that they like compared to what products that the company believes that they will like. These are some of our top companies, and you might have an affiliation to some of these on your own based on your personal shopping experience. Now we're going to talk a little bit about public supermarkets. You saw that they were number five on the list. I have some personal background with this organization. I worked for them for nine years down in Florida. They're a southeast-based grocery store chain that uh, prides themselves on customer service. Their slogan is, where shopping is a pleasure. It doesn't get much more uh, to the point than that. They definitely 
uh, preach to their employees the importance of customer service. Uh, and it's from top level management all the way down through. They definitely strive to make customers feel appreciated and make sure their shopping experience is a pleasure. So a campaign that was done while at the store, uh, while I worked there, that I have always kind of carried with me into other jobs that I've held before is when working with customers is to think red. And so we'll get into that shortly. Um, but what this campaign was, was a way that the corporate office was able to bring the idea of customer service down to the store level with a very simple term of, of red. And they would bring items into the break room, like slinkies and pencils and pens and notebook papers and tissues and stuff, just random little things to, to, that were all in, in red color. And they went over the campaign of Think Red with their employees to reemphasize the company's values of customer service. And it kept it simple. So what Red stood for was to recognize, to empathize, and then deliver to our customers. So first, recognize. You have to be aware of your surroundings and recognize your customers' wants and needs. It, it sounds simple, but it can become much more difficult than we realize, unless you're constantly thinking about what your customers are doing, how you're interacting with them. It's easy to lose sight of just recognizing their wants and needs. We have to be cognizant while the customers are present. A way that the grocery store did this at Publix was if we walked within 10 steps of a customer, we were told to smile and say hello. This made us feel inviting to those customers, and it never appeared where we were trying to not be helpful to them. Next is to empathize. The definition of empathize is to understand and share the feelings of another. To do that, we've got to ask questions. We've got to probe to gain clarity on what's important to that customer and why they might be satisfied or not satisfied. We really have to get an idea of their emotions so we can help obtain uh, an answer that's going to help them be satisfied. So put yourself in their shoes at any time possible. And then it becomes about what you can do to make it right. Next is to deliver. So you've now recognized and empathized with your customer. Now exceed their expectations. For example, in the grocery store, when someone asked us where a product was, we were not just to say down aisle 12 on the right-hand side. We were to walk them to that product. It's not often that, that, uh, that the customer knew exactly where down that aisle it was. And so it was definitely easier and showed, a, showed the customer that we wanted to provide that extra step, literally, to, to show them where the items were that they needed. As you can see here, this is the exact example I just mentioned. We really went the... the extra step to make sure they were serviced. Now I know it's cliche, but we have to treat them how we want to be treated. Always keep that in mind. So we might be asking, our associations in the customer service business, you know, we're, we're a nonprofit sports organization, you know, that provides uh, services and values to league members. So are we really in the customer service business? The answer is you bet. As long as they have an option to be in, in to be doing something else, then, a, then, then an organization or a company is in the customer service business because they can receive that service somewhere else. One thing I always want to highlight to to our associations and to bowling centers is that people bowl to have a good time. So our job should be easy to enhance that. They're not going to the DMV or to a, you know somewhere where it's a hassle for that, that customer. They're going to, to enjoy themselves in a recreation sport. So we need to enhance their experience. That's what we need to be doing for bowling, enhancing the bowler's experience. So now let's go through some examples of associations and how they can provide good customer service and what aspects. First, tournament operations. This is kind of the no-brainer. <clears throat> this is where we have our direct customer base attending a function that they've paid to do. They're taking time out of their day to attend because they want to have a good time. They like to compete. So we need to make sure that our customer service during our tournaments is top-notch. Having clear announcements and thanking the bowlers for bowling is vital. How often do we have someone walk in the settee, one of our directors or a volunteer, and thank the team captains for signing up and coming out and bowling today? People like to be thanked for participating in an event, especially one that we're sponsoring. Next is membership services. These are kind of the standard procedures that a customer 
one of our members expects to receive. They want to have their membership process timely, and they want to have their awards. These are kind of the two basics that we have a timeline for that need to be completed. So we need to make sure that we're getting them done in a timely manner. We need to make sure we're following up with our league secretaries. So if they are 30 days past the deadline of when the league started, that we can get in touch with them and remind them, hey, we need your stuff so we can get your member service. Awards presentations, making those bowlers feel important for that achievement that they had, especially with first-time bowlers. I know some, there are some associations out there that do a great job of when a bowler shoots his first 300 or 800, they have a, a director from the association go to that league, they make an awards presentation, they take their picture, they post it on their website, they put it on their Facebook page, and they send them a copy of that picture. So that bowler now has a keepsake of that first time that they received that award. Definitely makes the bowlers feel special. With general bowling questions, not all members are as knowledgeable as we are. Most of our association volunteers have likely been around the game for a long time. They've got a lot of experience. They've heard all the questions. But not everybody's heard them, and not everybody's asked them. So we need to think red when we're doing this. We need to recognize with those possible new customers, empathize with them, and then deliver the answers that they expect. Uh, this even goes into people who might not be members. Uh, for example, if you're an association in a, in a larger city where you have an office, and you can be looked up online. Uh, how often have you, if, if you are one of those folks, have you been called and asked if you have open lanes available? I know I've been in a couple of association offices where um, people just looking to casually go bowl will call the association office because that's what shows up on the Google search. You know, and instead of just saying, no, sorry, we don't have any, we don't have bowling lanes here, bye-bye. We need to look to provide them a little more information. They're obviously wanting to go bowling, so we should be happy about that. And we need to ask them where they're from. You know, what part of town do you live in so I can get you the contact information for the closest bowling center. That's some good service that we can provide to non-members even. And last but not least is association-related questions. Be open when someone inquires about your association, how your board is put together, you know, when your meetings are, if they would like to attend, if they've got any questions on your finances or, or any operations of the association. All too often, I've heard people get a little defensive when people question the operations. We need to have an open mind when people are asking. You know, we're a nonprofit organization, and we should be providing the information requested to our members. So now I have a challenge to you. Your challenge, if you choose to accept it, is to notice good or bad customer service this week. When you're out, either grocery shopping or at a restaurant, going out to dinner, whether you're anywhere, notice and look for good or bad customer service. Heck, maybe when you go bowling, look for that good or bad customer service. See the employees and how they're treating the customers. And if you see good customer service, which I hope you do, make a quick compliment to the management of the place that you're, that you're at, whether you're shopping or dining or uh, you know, recreationally attending. Make a compliment to the management about the employee and how helpful they were. It'll definitely help our awareness level of customer service. This way, when we go back and we deal with our association and we're at, a, at meetings or we're at events that we're hosting, we will be more cognizant and aware of the customer service we are providing to those customers because now we're looking at ourselves as an association as also being customer service driven to help our members in anything that they might have questions with. I also encourage you to bring this challenge to your board of directors. Have them do the same thing, not just you yourself who's attending the webinar, but have your board understand that we need to provide better service to our customers, always looking out for what else we could do to take that next step and take that initiative of helping our customers. Well, I want to thank you for joining us. I appreciate you taking uh, some time out of your day to listen in and, and tune in. Remember that challenge. And if you have any questions, my information is here on the screen. Feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, and I thank you for your time, and I thank you for everything your association does for the sport of bowling. Have a great day, guys.